Intro to Udon Sharp. Who is this for? This is for somebody who knows the way around Unity, but still thinks coding, scripting, programming is a black box of witchcraft. In short, you have no idea how to write or read code. Why Udon Sharp over Udon Graph? Udon Graph is a native default way to make code for 3.0 VRChat worlds. It uses graph nodes to make more of a visual representation of your code. Udon Sharp is basically C Sharp programming, but specialized for VRChat. It's a more traditional way to write code where you can actually type out what you want to do in your script. Download and install Udon Sharp. If you have the Creator Companion, you can simply go to the Curated Packages tab in your world and add Udon Sharp. While you're there, make sure you have the Udon Chat Client Simulator too, since this will help you troubleshoot your code quickly. If you don't have the Creator Companion, then go to the VRChat Community GitHub and download the latest release of Udon Sharp. Link is below. Under Setup, click the hyperlink in the latest release of Udon Sharp. Then under Assets, download Udon Sharp. Add this package to your Unity project. Download Microsoft Visual Studio. Visual Studio is an integrated development environment, or also known as an IDE. Technically, you don't need an IDE to code, since realistically you could type all your code up in Notepad and it will still work. But the benefit of an IDE is that it specializes in writing code. So it can help you find your mistakes and even predict what you're trying to write. Chances are you probably already have Visual Studio installed. To check in your project, go to Edit, Preferences, and External Tools. Visual Studio should be listed under External Scripts Editor at the top. If it's not, then you'll have to download it. Download the latest Community Edition from Microsoft. The link is in the description. Lastly, check the Package Manager to make sure you have the latest Visual Studio Code Editor and Editor installed. These are add-ons for Visual Studio and make it easier to code with. The Package Manager can be found under Window, Package Manager. First code, toggling a mirror on and off. Here in the scene, I have a mirror and a yellow sphere that will act as my button. The yellow sphere is just a default sphere with its name changed and a yellow material applied to it. To add an Udon behavior, select Add Component and type in Udon and click Udon Behavior. The Udon behavior has been added to the sphere. At the bottom of the Udon component, there's a drop down menu that should default to Udon C Sharp Program Asset. Select New Program, then Create Script. Save the script and wait a bit for Unity to create it. Once it's created, find the script and open it. It should default open in Visual Studio. Here is our script. Unity pre-populates a script skeleton so you can add to it. On the top of the script, there's a bunch of using things like Udon Sharp and Unity Engine. Simply put, these are references to collections of already made code that your script will be using. Next is your class. In this example, it's called mirror toggle. The class has two brackets, and in between these two brackets is where all the code you'll be writing will live. Inside the class, Unity has pre-written a start method. This isn't going to be useful for our mirror toggle, so you can either delete it or ignore it. The outcome will be the same. I'm going to ignore it. Right now, since there's no actual code written in our world, this sphere it will be no different than any other generic sphere. The next step is to make this sphere interactable meaning that it will be highlighted when somebody tries to click it. To do this, we need to add the interact method. A method contains a collection of statements. Statements are what actually controls the things in the game, like turning a mirror on or off, playing a sound when somebody joins, or keeping score in a game. The interact method is what you'll want to use anytime you want the player to click something and have something happen. Inside your class, type public override, void, interact, open parenthesis, close parenthesis. As you type that in, Visual Studio will give you recommendations in the drop-down menu. When you see the interact method pop up, click it, and Visual Studio will automatically fill in the rest of the method for you. The autofill gave me a sample statement that doesn't do anything, so I'm going to delete it. Now save your script in Visual Studio and head back to Unity. Unity is going to compile your script, and it may be unresponsive for a few seconds. This will happen anytime you make changes to your script and save it. Under the Udon Behavior component, in our yellow sphere, we have some additional settings added to it because we added the interact method. We can change the interaction text, the text you see when you hover your hand or cursor over an object, and a proximity slider, which is how far you can be from the object and still click it. 
If you have Client Simulator installed, you can press play above the scene to test your code. Otherwise, you'll have to build and test to test this. As you can see, when I scroll over the sphere, it will highlight and state my interaction text. But when I click it, nothing happens. This is because in our code, there are no statements written inside the interact method. Stop testing by selecting the play button again and go back to the script. Currently, our script is pretty blind to the outside world. It only knows about itself and the yellow sphere that it's attached to. We will have to tell the script that the mirror exists. To do this, we'll need to add a variable into our class that represents the mirror. In the class, but outside any methods, type public game object super hot mirror and end it with a semicolon. A variable is a container that holds something. It could be a number, a word, a game object, a component of a game object, or something else. Public here means that the variable can be accessed by other scripts you write, but most importantly, it means that this variable can be seen and changed in your inspector in Unity. If you save your script and go back to Unity, you will see that now there is an option to place a game object into your script. Game object is the type of variable. Since mirror is a game object, we use game object to define our variable. Lastly, super hot mirror is the name of our variable. This can be whatever you want it to be. Make sure it's something that you can easily recognize. As you probably have noticed, things are typed a little weird here. Super hot mirror has no spaces and it's capitalized where spaces should be. This is called camel case and it's a naming convention used in C-sharp. You don't have to follow camel case, but you can't have any spaces in your variables. Lastly, there's a semicolon. Semicolons act as a period. It tells the script when this variable or statement is completed. Now that we have a variable for a mirror, we can use it in a statement in our interact method. In our interact method, type superhot mirror, period, set active, open parenthesis true, close parenthesis, semicolon. As you type, if you see what you need, you can select it or hit the tab key for quick typing. Superhot mirror is our mirror game object variable that we just stated. Set active is a method specifically for game objects like our superhot mirror. Set active changes whether the checkbox on our game object is checked or not. If true is used in parentheses, then it will check off the box making the game object active. If false is used, it will uncheck the box making the object inactive. In Unity, click and drag the mirror game object into the super hot mirror spot on the Udon behavior on the yellow sphere. Then uncheck the mirror object so it's inactive. Test the world and see if it works. Now the mirror will turn on, but it won't turn off. That's because every time we click the sphere, it's setting the mirror on. Now back to our code. We want to keep track of whenever the mirror is turned on or off. For this, we're going to use a bool. Add another variable below the super hot mirror. This will be public, so we can see it in the inspector and understand how it works. A bool, which is a type of variable. Mirror is on, which is the name that I've chosen, and ended with a semicolon. Save the script and check out this new variable in the Unity inspector. As you can see, a bool is a checkbox. A bool is either true or false. In our interact method, add mirror is on equals true, semicolon. An equal sign will set whatever is on the left to whatever is on the right of it. So when we click the yellow sphere in testing, you can see mirror is on will have its box checked. Now that we have two statements in our interact method, it's important for me to point out when a method is executing, it will read the statements from top to bottom. So first the mirror will be set active and then mirror is on will be set to true. This is important as you add more code to your scripts. Next is time to add some logic to this method. In the interact method, type if open parentheses mirror is on equals equals false close parentheses followed by an open and close bracket. These are the same brackets used in the interact method, the squiggly ones. Cut and paste our two lines of code into the bracket of this if statement. What an if statement does is it will check if whatever is in the parentheses is true. And if that's true, it will run whatever code is written between its brackets. If what is in between the parentheses is not true, then it will not let the code that's within its brackets be run, and the script will skip over it. In the parentheses, we typed mirror is on equals equals false. 
The double equal sign does not set our mirror is on variable to false. Instead, it is comparing the left and the right side together. If they are the same, it will declare what's in the parentheses as true. And if they are different, it will be declared as false. So in order to get a true value out of the double equal sign, mirror is on will have to be set to false. Otherwise, the if statement will not run the code in the brackets. Luckily for us, mirror is on defaults to false. As long as you don't check it off in the inspector, it will stay false when the game runs. When we click the sphere, the if statement checks to see if mirror is on is false. If it's false, then it will turn the mirror on and then set is mirror on to true. Now when you go click the sphere a second time, the if statement will check again if mirror is on is false and it will fail the check since we just set it to true. And the script will skip over the statements in the if brackets and now we are stuck with the mirror still being on. The final piece of code we need to add is the second part of the if statement. Directly after the if statement, add the word else and an open and closed brackets. Copy and paste the two lines of code in the if statement into the else statement and change the trues to falses. Else is the opportunistic little brother of if. When if doesn't run because its conditions are not met, then else will run. But if the if statement does run, then else will not run. Meaning every time you click the sphere, only the if statement or the else statement will run. And it's all dependent on if the if statement is having a true value in its parentheses. Save the code and test out the world. Now when you click the yellow sphere, it will toggle the mirror on and off. Congratulations, you just made your first mirror toggle script. As you might be able to tell, this script is not only for toggling mirrors, but could be toggling any game object on or off. All because we called it super hot mirror doesn't mean we can't put a door, chairs, or a floor into this. A couple of final cleanup items. I don't really need the start method in my script, so I'm going to delete it. And also, our mirror is on bool doesn't need to be public. I don't need to see it in the inspector. So I can change public to private and save the script. Now you can see it's missing from the inspector, but it still exists and still doing its job just the same. One last note of disclaimer. This is far from the most elegant way to make a mirror toggle, but I think it's one of the best ways to start learning Udon Sharp and C Sharp, since it uses more parts that you can use in other scripts. Thanks for watching.